as snow from heaven, and do not return with it, but the water of the earth, and make it bring forth in the blood, that it may bring seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return for me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. May the Lord have a blessing that hears, and moves, and feeds on this holy and righteous work. Amen. Let us go to the throne of grace. Amen. Gracious Lord, as we gather here today, Thank you for our heart to press our way to your sanctuary Thank one more time. Yes, Lord. As we come to see once more that the world you created by that divine imperative mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago, yeah, in six days, and with the pronouncement that it is good, now in the throes of sin's degradation is a violent and dangerous place, wow. being wrapped by storms, mm -hmm. where we speak not only of a calamity such as Katrina, whose anniversary we just saw, Lord, who ravaged our neighbors to the west, and Sally, who seems to head our way. But we also speak of storms of the inhumanity, speaking of storms of unrighteousness, storms of sexual immorality, storms of wickedness, covetousness, and maliciousness, being full of the envy, murder, strife, and deceit. But Lord, it is good to know that, as Psalm 46 says, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We should not fear, because your word says, and that is the river, whose streams shall make life the city of God. And you are in this world, and you shall not be moved. So, Lord, I thank you for giving us a peace in the midst of our storms, because we know that when you are in the boat with us, like you were with the disciples, you can speak to the storms in our lives and say to them, in peace be still. And we won't be afraid. When your word lays down and nourishes us with Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And first as long as 5, 16 to 18, we rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. And we put that in 4, 4, 6, 12. And be anxious to do nothing. But in all things by prayer and supplication, thanks to you. We should submit our, we should submit our request to you and your peace. Which goes beyond the end of the Keep our hearts and lives from Christ Jesus. Then we can sing that all my friend without fear. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Lord, oh, bless our pastor as he brings the living word this morning to water us and need refreshing. Lord, bless those who are here today to hear, and those who desire to be here but not be Bless the leadership of this church and of this country. And to our body of Christ, that we may be people of God who are going to be by your Holy Spirit. These things we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake of And God's people say,
And then about 4.30 this morning, I got up and sitting at my desk meditating on that. And somehow found myself in Isaiah 55. <laughs> and uh, when I heard you read the devotional passage, Amen. that was my confirmation. Amen. That, uh, each and every one of you all spaces on today. As you all know, the governor has moved us to phase three, uh, which simply means that our buildings can be at 75% capacity. We're still observing our safety protocols, six feet distance, uh, still wearing our masks when we uh, can't social distance. And more importantly, we are still having the church fumigated and disinfected every week. Uh, in between worship services. Amen. Amen. I'm just excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, again, I want you to continue to pray for all of our educators, all of our parents, and especially all of our children. We've got a lot of parents who thought that their occupation was something else. Now they find themselves engaged in the occupation of education. I think that they might not ever admit it, but I think every now and again they slip down on their knees at night and say, God, I thank you for school teaching. Amen. <laughs> so let's do this right uh, for our schools, for our parents, our teachers, our children. Continue to pray for our government officials as they continue to lead and guide us. Pray for our scientists, amen, amen. Uh, as they provide us with the information that is needed and necessary. Give God praise for
Sir, and even Isaiah 56 through 66, he presents God to us as our conqueror. In each of these uh, portraits, the Messiah is endowed with the spirit and word, characterized by righteousness, and he is the messianic hope that is of David. And I know you're looking at me saying, Pastor, there's a whole lot of information out here today. Uh, depending on what news network you watch or tune into, messages are being twisted. Uh, there's a word that they use that I'm still curious about that is called spin. And that means that you heard something with your own ears. And now it is up to another individual to spin it or to present it in a way that uh, takes away the meaning of what it actually meant. Mm -hmm. I'm glad this morning that God doesn't spin his word. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm glad that God simply presents his word. And then we have a choice to make. Will we accept the true claims of Scripture or will we allow the world to pull us away from the truth of God. I believe that we need to preach the gospel every chance we get. I, I believe that we need to talk about who God is every chance that we get. Why is that so important? It keeps us anchored in the storms of life. Uh, there's somebody here who knows what I'm talking about. You've heard it before, and I'll say it again. Everybody is either coming out of a storm, oh, yeah. uh, uh, in a storm, or on their way into a storm. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so for just a few moments this morning, I know you're saying, so why should I trust God's invitation? The first thing I want to tell you is that you need to trust God's motives. All right. Uh, 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 some folks send you an invitation trying to hook up with you to see what you can do for them. Uh, then some folks send you an invitation because they just simply want to be in your business. Amen. Uh, uh, some people want to be a part of your life for what you can do for them or how they can use you to their benefit. But I want you to hear what Isaiah says. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and he will have compassion on him and to our God, but he will abundantly pardon. You heard me say it before, Isaiah 55, uh, 6 through 7 is part of my testimony. It is these words that drew me to God. It is these words that I heard uh, as a young man living in Illinois and began to ponder what does life really mean. And when I heard these words, Seek the Lord while he may be found. It helped me to understand that there may come a time in our lives when God is not available to us. So, so, so while we have an opportunity, we need to seek God while he may be found. There's somebody uh, who can testify who's sitting here right now. Uh, you back in church at 75% capacity. You back during phase two because there was a uh, where you couldn't come to the house of the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. If the pandemic didn't teach me anything else, it taught me, Brother Aaron, never to take for granted the gathering of the saints. Amen. Never take. I, 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 I'm not knocking anybody. I get it. I understand if you have a health condition. I understand if you have fear. But I stop by to tell you that I'm glad to be in the house. Yeah. 
Jesus in Luke illustrates the heart of God yeah. in what we know as the parable of the prodigal son. You know it so well that I won't go into much detail. But the reality is that here is a son who says to his father, I want to live life my way. Oh, yeah. That right there, uh, Pastor Luther always says, will be the theme song of many in hell. Yeah. I did it my way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, you, 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 if, if you live past your teenage years and have managed to survive your adolescence, you can testify right now that you tried your way. <laughs> and, and, and if you're real honest about it, you don't want to do it your way anymore. Raquel was saying to me this morning, she said, I've lived long enough. She said, there was a time in my life when I just want 
underneath the use of compassion. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can, can, can you just use a God in your life who's not always going through the list of why you ended up like you did? But saying to you, you are safe now. Yes. You are protected now. You will be provided for now. Thank you. Trust in moments. Yeah. When I think about this, I was meditating on Romans 6, verses um, 1 through 4, where Paul says, don't you know that as many of you as were baptized into his death, that the same way he was raised, you also have been raised to new life. And I began to think about that and say, you know what? I think we have a misconception about who God is. God said, I want you to take off the old and I want you to put on new clothes because I want you to understand your new identity. And in your new identity, there's not only power, but now you have a fresh perspective on life. Have you ever had a sinus infection? It's so bad that you couldn't uh, smell anything. And then when the sinus infection clears up, now not only can you breathe again, but you actually can smell smell, uh, flavors, and aromas. And that's what God is saying to us. When you come into your new relationship with God, you begin to appreciate things that you previously did not appreciate. You begin to appreciate having your health and your strength. You begin to appreciate being clothed in your right mind. You begin to appreciate the storms of life. Why, Pastor? Because it was in the Thank you. 
mercy for me, there's compassion for me, there's joy for me.
simply is the assigning of human characteristics to inanimate objects. Isaiah said that your surroundings begin to change now. Look at this. He said, the mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you. And all the trees of the field begin to clap their hands. In other words, he said, see, the words start working in your life. First of all, an internal change happens. You begin to have joy, right? Then you begin to have peace. Then your atmosphere begins to change. Uh, the things that were dark now look light. He said the mountains begin to break forth and praise God. The trees start clapping their hands. In other words, what he's saying is what you couldn't move, God begin to move. What you couldn't control, God will begin to control. What you couldn't orchestrate, What did they say that day on the boat when Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves? They said, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. I I'm trying to get you to see. The stuff in your life that doesn't respond to anything else will respond to the word of God. You need to start speaking.
long time. Yeah. They said, we meet down at the church and we're going to pray for rain so the crops can come in. Whole town came. They started praying. Everybody left, came back again, kept on praying. Third time they came to the church, this old mother was walking up the street with an umbrella out. Yeah. Some was scorching down and everything. And somebody said, Mother, why you got the umbrella? She said, I'm not going to pray if I ain't going to expect God to do what he said. I don't know about you. That's all I've been trying to tell you for a whole while I've been talking to you. Ain't no need to pray for it. They ain't walking around like it ain't going to happen. I don't know about you, but I thank God that I accepted the invitation. Jesus. 